Miami, upset alert in Berkeley? It's not as crazy as you'd think. You are Locked On College Football, your daily podcast on all things college football. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Locked On College. Oh. So tragic. I clicked all the things I needed to click except one. That's tragedy right there. All right, let's do it again. <laughs> Miami, upset alert? Might not be as crazy as you'd think. You are locked on college football, your daily podcast on all things college football. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Locked On College Football. I'm your host, Spencer McLaughlin. Thank you so much for making this your first listen or your first view every day. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day and your daily source to stay up to date with the biggest stories in the greatest sport on planet Earth. Today's episode, it's brought to you by our friends over at Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Full ACC picks, full Big 12 picks, all that's coming up on today's show. But first, that is Thomas Dunn, right for California.com with the bear in the background and all because for the first time ever, College Game Day is going to Berkeley, California, just as we all thought it would during this week. Uh, casuals might say this is a down week of college football, but Cal can in- introduce some craziness into that equation, Thomas. And Miami's a 10.5 point favorite. I think they should be. Miami's a better team on paper, but this is a long trip that Miami... Now, Mario Cristobal knows that, that stadium, but this is a long trip. It's a later game. It, it just it smells to me like a game where if Miami isn't careful, Cal can give them a little bit of a serious scare. You know, that mindset, you could translate that to a lot of former Pac-12 schools. You walk into Berkeley on a Friday or Saturday night, and you're like, is this where my CFP dreams go to die? Right here in California Memorial Stadium with the backdrop, backdrop of the Bay Area. My three words... Of, a, of the mentality of walking into this game is cardiac Cal chaos. Uh, we know no matter what happens. <laughs> the the most aggressive gonna, alliteration ever aired on this show. Cal will provide all sorts of chaos on and off the field this weekend. I am fully prepared for it. Uh, like you mentioned, Miami 10 and a half point favorite. I 1000% am behind it. They've earned it. They're a top 10 team in the country with a lot of talent on both sides of the football. Namely, you mentioned Mario Cristobal, head coach, someone who's very familiar with Justin Wilcox, and on the inverse side of that, Cam Ward, a quarterback that Cal fans are very familiar with, and a defense that maybe Cam Ward is also familiar with. Damian Martinez, a guy in the in the backfield who Cal fans are familiar with. Another guy who he may who may understand and help the offensive game planning going up against a Peter Sermon defense. So lots of familiar faces despite them being in new places. Uh, in regards to the travel, I'm intrigued to see how Miami handled it, especially in the second half, because you get to the second half, it's about 9 p.m., 9.30 p.m. PST. Now you're reaching midnight, 12.30 a.m. EST the next day on Miami time. So now you're wondering, you can throw a first punch. Can you sustain that punch? Can you consistently continue to make the right decisions when the when it calls for it, especially when you're all the way away from home? And that's really what I want to see from the Hurricanes this weekend. Can they continue to prove that they've taken that next step in the maturity level? And can Cal go punch for punch with them? They have they did well in their first bout against Auburn. They did less well, we'll say that, against Florida State in their second bout. That's being bout. very nice. That's being uh, yeah. aggressively yeah. nice. You know, sometimes you do have to be nice. Sometimes you have to pat them on the head and say, we'll get them next week. Uh, yeah. In this case, two weeks. Uh, so heard- here's, he, Th- Thomas, here's the curious thing with, with Cal. And this has been a Justin Wilcox thing for many years and why I look at this game and say, does Miami cover that 10 and a half point number? I don't know. I can see them being in a dog fight is Cal goes up and Cal goes down and the up and down depends on who they're playing. They lost to another winless team a couple weeks ago against Florida state. I, I, I don't know how Justin Wilcox keeps on doing it, but he I don't did. know either. It just it, it just continues. This is a time honored tradition in Berkeley at this point. But here's my concern for Cal and where I feel confident Miami is going to win the football game. Well, our score predictions later in this segment uh, as well. But the defensive line for Miami is disruptive. They are big. They are physical. I like what I've seen from that unit this year. 
That's what caused Cal problems against Florida State. That was really it. Cal won several facets of the game. Cal should have won the football game if not for the fact that Fernando Mendoza looked like a punching bag after Floyd Mayweather goes to the gym for a practice round. I don't think I got that verbiage right, but you get the point I'm making. He was beat up. He was really, really beat up. He looked like one of the punching bags from Captain America in uh, Marvel's The Avengers from 2012. That's a better analogy that I'm much more comfortable with. That's my biggest concern here. I don't know if that Cal offensive line is holding up against Miami in this spot. You're not wrong on any of those fronts. I think Miami's clear strength is at the point of attack on both sides of the football, honestly. Even though they haven't necessarily gotten all of the run game that they really want, especially with Damian Martinez starting in the backfield, I think Miami's physicality and their ability to shoot gaps, be aggressive, and most importantly set Cal behind the chains would and should be on full display uh, this Saturday in Berkeley. It's the one worry I have. Fernando Mendoza, like you mentioned, he's been sacked left, right, and center. And it hasn't just been the Florida State game. That is where maybe it started accelerating and exponentially increasing the rate of sacks and the rate of getting stuffed. But the prior weeks against Auburn, San Diego State, even UC Davis, he's just taking too many hits from too many spots. The left side of the line has been a big concern, and I don't think the the Bears have addressed it quite yet. Justin Wilcox said it's up in the air as to whether they actually changed any of the starting five out of the offensive line unit. I'm going to believe him. I do think there's a healthy competition heading on there. But you got a Miami defensive line that has tons of disruptors on the interior and on the edge. You're asking for it if you can hope that Fernando Mendoza and the offense can consistently stay ahead of the chains. You're going to need to run the ball because you have to get Miami to respect that run, even though Cal hasn't been as effective as they need to be in it so far this year. And if they don't, it could be in for a world of hurt and a world of third and long. And at that point, it's up to Fernando Mendoza to try and salvage it like he did against Florida State. And who knows what can happen at that point. How does Cal win this football game? They need to force Cam Ward. And this is going to sound really ironic considering how well he started this season, but they need to force Cam Ward to continually make the right decisions. If he doesn't have what he likes with Isaiah Horton or Xavier Restrepo or Jacoby George or whoever it may be, is he willing to take that four-yard check down? He's going to try and chuck it up. Is he going to continue to try and be the, the poised Heisman favorite that he has been so far? Because Cal fans have seen the pretty much the, the variance of Cam Ward, if you will. He's got six total touchdowns in two games against Cal. He also has six total turnovers. So Cam Ward is someone who has shown Cal everything on the scale and then some. If Cam Ward is who he says he is this year and the best player in college football, and he's definitely one of them, he needs to continually make the right decisions when he, when the going gets tough because I don't expect Miami to walk in and boat race Cal. And I don't expect Cal to come in and throw my several haymakers at Miami and blow them out myself. So can Cam Ward continually make the right decision and put Miami in a position to win when the going gets tough, especially if it's a tight game late into the fourth quarter? Yeah, the turnover is a big problem last week against Virginia Tech. It's the only reason that Virginia Tech was actually in the football game is Miami kept driving down the field because Virginia Tech couldn't stop them. And then Cam Ward would say, here you go. You can have the football. You go do whatever you'd like. And Virginia Tech said, oh, well, hey, this is going to make it a close game. And then we'll get to the whole uh, Hail Mary situation, which, uh, as I stated earlier this week, I don't think it was a catch. I think the right call was eventually made. But let's get to what everyone loves to remember. Only when I get it wrong, of course, Thomas. That's a score prediction. So I think Miami comes out of the gate. And I think they're a little sluggish. And I they're either going to be because of the long trip and the time of day that this game is being played and you know coming all the way from uh, Miami, they'll be still at least a little bit hung up on East Coast time. I think they either start slow or stumble to the finish line. I do think Miami wins. I think they eke out a cover as well. 31 to 20. It's a 10 and a half point line, according to our friends at FanDuel. I think Cam Ward hones himself in, takes those check downs. I hope Shannon Dawson and Mario Cristobal went to him and said, hey, let's just make solid, simple plays. Have a spectacular one every now and then, but just go out there, execute the offense. Let's run the football a little bit. 31-20, I take the Hurricanes. Are you calling the upset here, Thomas, for the first ever game day trip to Berkeley? I feel like the cards say I have to. But I'm not. Oh, I'm not. Oh, and if so Cal bad. proves me wrong, I'm glad because I deserve to be proven wrong. Some may say this is the announcer's jinx. I'm not <laughs> one to say yes or no to that. But if they prove me wrong, I'm glad they did. I also have a final score of Miami 31, Cal 20. So oh, really gosh, this is the worst. We look. Yeah. 
let me assure you folks, there was no planning to that. That's like the third time that this has happened this year on this show. And by the way, I'll just point out, every time that that has happened, the score has been wildly off base. So get ready for either Miami 42 to 6 or Cal 38 to 10 and nothing in between is well, well, well. what, what we're destined we for. What if we get Cal 7, Miami 3 in the sicko bowl of the year and we get a redux of <laughs> Auburn Cal 2023 where nobody leaves happy? What about that? There's always a rule that happens. That seems entirely entirely feasible. You know, the, Cal, the, the Cal Auburn game from last year, a little ACC after dark action. Yeah, I'd, I'd certainly be here for yeah. it. Thomas Dunn, yeah. right for California.com. Thomas, appreciate it. For sure, man. Louisville's got to win or they're not making the ACC championship game. Who else is winning the ACC this week? That is coming up next. First, this episode brought to you by Game Time, which has a new feature called Game Time Picks, which makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier. Game Time Picks, which makes it easier, not harder. That's what Game Time's all about. Filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats, so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. Curation makes it easier to save more on sports, concerts, comedy, which I'm a big fan of, theater, anything you want. They've also got panoramic views from your seat in the app before you buy. Game Time knows you want to know what to expect, and they're helping you out. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Lockdown College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E. That's Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Oh, that's right, it's Game Time. Hey, Louisville fans, just a heads up. I uh, have something to tell you that you may or may not know, but you need to know going into this matchup with SMU. Full week six ACC picks coming up right now, but starting with the big stakes in Louisville, Kentucky. SMU travels on the road to try to knock off the Cardinals on their home field who are off a loss last week. That stinks. Wasn't an ACC game. So they're, they're still a zero in the loss column for Louisville as far as conference play goes. They play SMU this week, who have been vastly improved since the first couple weeks of the season, since they made the flip to Jennings at quarterback. It has worked out so far for Rhett Lashley and company, coming off a win against Florida State last week. Then they play at Virginia next week, very winnable football game, and then they host Miami. And later in the season, they They've got to play Boston College on the road. They've got to play Clemson on the road. They have to play Stanford on the road. Three straight conference road games without a bye are upcoming following uh, the Virginia game. So it's going to be a uh, it's going to be a tough stretch. Or following the Miami game, beg your pardon. So there's going to be a tough stretch of road games in there. They also have to play Pitt. Then they have a non-conference game against Kentucky to end the year as always. But Louisville, if, if if they want to make the ACC championship game, you have to win this one. You have to win this one. Because between Miami and Clemson, you're probably only getting one of those. I don't think you're getting two. You're getting one at most. So if you're going to make the ACC title game, you have to have two or fewer losses. And you can't afford to have one of them be SMU. This is a prove-it moment for SMU. Have you really improved to the hype that some people had for you before the season? Can you live up to that potential? Can you play with the big kids at the top of the ACC? I'll take the Cardinals to win at home. I think SMU can hang around, though, with the way the offense has been cooking. 28-24, to 24, Louisville gets it done at home. Elsewhere, Friday night in Las Vegas, UNLV hosting Syracuse. Big G5 implications here. If it's another Power 4 win for UNLV, that resume, hmm. trending upwards. Trend, trending upwards again. They've already got two Big 12 wins. They could put an ACC feather in their resume cap. That'd be pretty good. And I think UNLV gets it done. Quarterback change, no problem last week, 28 to 24. And uh, allow me to go back for just a moment because I flipped my score predictions here. Sometimes that happens. I could have re recorded. You never would have known. But I want to be real with you guys. I want to be honest with you guys. Louisville 30, SMU 13. I think that is how it plays out. And Louisville makes a statement. That'd be a statement win against SMU. You won't hear me flipping on that position uh, if, if Louisville does win the game by 17 points. Boston College, very simple. They travel to Virginia. If Thomas Castellanos plays, I think they win. If he doesn't, 
I think they lose. Next question. It's a one-point spread. You can pick it either way. Pitt travels to North Carolina. They're a slight favorite. Panthers, sneaky nice team this year. Pitt and Duke, two teams flying under the radar that haven't lost a football game yet. Do you understand that? They have the same number of losses combined as Miami. Pitt, 24. North Carolina, 14 in Chapel Hill. I think the slide continues for the Tar Heels in their first ACC game since losing to Duke and the first overall ACC game for Pitt. NC State, I, uh, oh my gosh, I'm very disappointed in NC State, very disappointed in NC State and what they have done so far this year. I, I pray, I pray for Dave Doran's sake, I pray for the Wolfpack's sake that they beat Wake Forest at home. I think it's ugly. They barely got by NIU last week, 24-17. I mean, they got it done. Congratulations. I think they'll do it again because they're at home. I think about picking this one as an upset. I'll take Wake Forest to keep it close. 21-18. to 18. Super dog pick the Demon Deacons. Virginia Tech traveling to Stanford. Now, am I going to feel better about this uh, spread prediction if, and only if, Ashton Daniels plays for the Cardinal? Yes, 100%. But even if he doesn't play, this is an eight-point spread in favor of Virginia Tech. They lost as a 13-and-a-half-point road favorite against Vanderbilt a few weeks ago. If Ashton Daniels plays, I think Stanford wins the football game. I don't know that he does. So I'll go Virginia Tech 31-24. But if you give me confirmation that Ashton Daniels plays in this football game, I think the Cardinal on the farm get another marquee win in year two of the Troy Taylor era. And I think they'll win that game 27 to 23. Clemson travels to Florida State, bigger than a two touchdown favorite. And guess what? They're going to cover. Clemson has been steamrolling since they got steamrolled by Georgia. They have then been laying the lumber to everybody in their path. And Florida State is an unbridled mess. DJU is hurt. Guess what? I don't care. That benching should have happened a long time ago. It didn't. Why? I don't know. I called for it here on the show, said, hey, this season's over. Playing DJU doesn't do you any good. Well, now he's got a finger injury and the opportunity presents itself to try to get Brock Glenn some reps and see, can he be the guy? Does he have any potential or does Florida State need to completely reset at the quarterback position because they don't have a future starter in that room? Clemson's playing hot. Florida State's playing cold. Florida State's offense still stinks. Quarterback questions. Give me Clemson 38, Florida State 3. I think this is going to send the fans down there in Tallahassee home early. Knowles fans are going to be walking out of the stadium before the fourth quarter starts because I can't watch that. I can't watch that anymore. That is how that game plays out. 38-3. That's the biggest conference game point discrepancy that I've predicted so far on this show, and I feel really good about it. I feel really good about what Garrett Riley and Kate Klubnick have got going on with the Tigers right now. There's not going to be a ruckus home environment because they know the season is over and it's all a disaster. Florida State just looks lifeless all the time. Give me Clemson, 38-3. to Last game here, Georgia Tech, big favorite. Don't know if they should be, but they should be favored at home against Duke. This spells slugfest to me. This also smells like a slugfest to me is what I meant to say. Duke last week was down 20 to nothing at home against North Carolina, came back to win the football game. They found something with the rushing attack. Malik Murphy did enough. I like Malik Murphy. I think he's done a good job for Manny Diaz and company. I don't think they go into Atlanta and win this football game against Georgia Tech. Brent Key's team, after that big win against Florida State in week one, it was a massive upset. They were ranked. They've kind of slowed down a little bit. They had the loss against Louisville. They lost to Boston College. They've been fine. Georgia Tech is still a fine, capable team. Duke is 5-0. and don't, like the, don't let the records fool you, though. I think Georgia Tech has a little bit more consistency in their play, even though they've had a couple of losses this year. I think the Yellow Jackets get this one done at home give me the jackets 17 to 14 you got a couple of physical football teams here manny diaz defensive guy they love physicality brent key run game guy wants to push you around this is not going to be a high scoring football game take the under georgia tech 17 duke 14
that's a full slate of picks this week in the ACC. Do you think I'm done with picks on this show? I am most definitely not. We're going to the Big 12, the league that the ACC is now regularly compared to outside of college football and in it, suppose, I, I guess as well, and justifiably so. Is Arizona, was I wrong on Arizona? We're going to find out this week. That's coming up next. First, I want to tell you about my friends over at FanDuel, which they can be your friends too. You know why? Because they're great. They're America's number one sports book, as a matter of fact. And NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. Do you want to bet college football? Do Do you think you have what it takes to be a sharp rather than a dull? Do you think that you know better than I do? with the spread picks. Well, guess what? You can try your luck over at FanDuel. You get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. 200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place the first $5 bet. That is how great FanDuel is. So go check them out at FanDuel.com. Was I wrong on Arizona? My answer to that is I still don't know because Here's the deal. That's Richie Brasher. I've locked on Sun Devils, by the way. He very much would like for me to still be right on Arizona. But the Wildcats went into Salt Lake City, and this is an impressive win. I don't really care who's a quarterback, except I do care who's a quarterback. And Kyle Whittingham not taking points with a backup quarterback was, uh, shall we say, bizarre to say the least. But Arizona winning in Salt Lake City, that's a really hard thing to do, Richie. But I'm not on the... Big 12 championship bandwagon just yet, though I don't know whose bandwagon I am on it for in this conference. It's the most wide open of any in college football, which is just the way that that we drew it up. But what do you make of Arizona? And you, I don't know if you can say a good thing about Arizona, if that's something that can be verbalized, and that may or may not be why I brought you on this show. You know, they certainly are one of the colleges in the state of Arizona. <laughs> And they have one of the football teams of all time, Spencer. They, they've got a really good connection between Fafita and McMillan. But it, as you have said on this podcast before, it takes more to be a good football team than a really good quarterback and a really good receiver. And they have been exposed throughout the year. Uh, I, I think everyone has chosen to forget that New Mexico and NIU, NAU, excuse me, took them down to the wire, both of those in Tucson. You went to Utah, you got a win over Utah. That's great, that's awesome. You did it without camerizing, which is apparently one of the biggest deals in college football. That's a completely different Utah team. And I'll give them their flowers. It's a ranked opponent. It was top 10 at the time. Good for you. You still have proven to be closer to the bottom eight in the Big 12 than you are the top eight in the Big 12. So here's where I am at with with, with Arizona. I think they're going down this week at home against Texas Tech. Now, have the Red Raiders had their defensive issues? Yes. I'd I'd feel a lot better if they could figure out how to stop literally anybody. However, the offense has been cooking. And I like the way that Texas Tech has played since their only loss of the year against Washington State in Week 2 up in Pullman, which you and I both know is a very difficult place to play. I don't buy into Arizona. Arizona got my attention at the bar last week with a win against Utah, which is an ironic metaphor given that it's Utah, but they did not get me to go over and start a conversation yet. But if they beat Texas Tech this week, which I don't think they will, then I will say, okay, maybe I was wrong on Arizona. Maybe Brent Brennan has figured things out after the early stumbles, only one of which turned into a loss. And remember, Yes, it was a blowout loss against Kansas State, but that was not a Big 12 conference game. So this team has a chance to remain unbeaten and have a head-to-head with a Texas Tech team that also could be an 8-9 win team at the end of the year, and that could matter a great deal. Yep, I can tell you as an ASU fan who had to go to Lubbock, that is a much better team than I anticipated them to be. They are pretty good on offense. They got a running back named Taj Brooks who's just absolutely phenomenal. The defense is young, it's inexperienced, but they have some some really good flashes there. And I think it could give Arizona a little bit of trouble 
if Fafita struggles to find T-Mac, which, I mean, that's only really happened once this year against NAU. But if Texas Tech comes out with a good strategy to to slow down McMillan, you could see Fafita struggle a little bit against this Texas Tech defense. I am with you, though. I got Red Raiders in Tucson. I think right now Texas Tech is just a red-hot football team. I think Arizona, they're, they're coming off a great win. We've seen them more often than not this year struggle against their opponents. I got Texas Tech. Yeah, I can't believe you picked against Arizona, Richie. Who would have thought? Uh, shock and awe here in college football. Let's go to your game in the Big 12, though, because this is an interesting one. Before the season, I would have almost sharpied this down as a loss for ASU. They're three-point home favorites against Kansas, who are just – regressing back to old habits. It reminds me of my golf swing because I have flashes where, oh, this is going great. And then all of a sudden, why am I doing this? I know it doesn't work. Kansas is not the football team that I and others thought they would be this season. Losing Andy, Andy Kotelnicki is clearly, I mean, broken. Jalen Daniels, I'm pretty sure he's had a turnover in every single game so far this year. There's something about Kansas, though, that makes me think they're going to go in and beat the Sun Devils. I'm so sorry, Richie, but I, I've got Kansas winning this game. I have Texas Tech winning 38-35 in uh, Tucson, and I think the uh, Big 12 schools in the state of Arizona both go down. Kansas 28-21. So I can understand the logic that you're coming from. I can also tell you that Kansas is itching to get back in the win column. They've just been embarrassed all year long. And you would think at some point everything's going to start clicking for the Jayhawks. And it could be this week against an ASU team that is still finding its footing in the Big 12. They started the year 3-0 and and out of conference play, but they went to Lubbock and they got humbled. They're back home. They're fresh off a of bye week. They should be ready for Kansas. I was with you at the start of the year. This was a game that I put in pen, was a loss for ASU. I have very much changed that since then, and I'm sticking with my prediction here. I still got ASU over Kansas at home. If for no other reason than Kenny Dillingham and the athletic department promised the student section, if they stay for 60 minutes the whole game, instead of going to Mill Avenue in the second half, everyone receives a Chick-fil-A gift card. I mean, that's how you win football games right there. Okay. I respect <laughs> the effort. You know why? Because Chick-fil-A is delicious. I'd stay for Chick-fil-A. Let's go a little rapid fire around the rest of the Big 12 as well. UCF travels to Florida. I don't know why Billy Napier is still the head coach. The buyout must be a lot of money that Florida doesn't want to pay. But I think this is another instance in which they just contribute to the narrative of, yeah, Napier's not going to be our coach anymore. Give me the Knights to bounce back after a home loss to Colorado last week. I think they go into Gainesville where – I'm sure the fans will show up, and it'll be exciting because it's an in-state matchup, but 27-13, I like UCF to win this game. Yeah, copy-paste what I said about Kansas, put it in into Florida. They're underachieving, all that good stuff. UCF, though, is a good football team that just got embarrassed in Orlando. They're not going to Gainesville with the same mindset of playing underachieving football. Give me the Knights big, at least two possessions. Iowa State hosting Baylor. I don't know why I have this recurring faith in Baylor to play better than they're either. actually going to. They, they they have lost a lot of games in a row against actual power four opponents. According to our friends at FanDuel, Iowa State favored by 11 and a half. I'll, I'll just for fun say this is a low scoring game in which Baylor covers, but I don't think they actually look competitive. 24-14, give me the Cyclones. I think that Baylor is a quality football team. Unfortunately, I don't think Aranda is the coach to get them over that hump. And at this point, I think a lot of other Baylor fans are kind of out on him as well. Meanwhile, what Matty Campbell's done at Iowa State over the last several years has been phenomenal and a ton of fun to watch. They also are serious competitors in the Big 12 right now, and that secondary is disgusting. I got Iowa State here pretty com uh, comfortably in Ames. Yeah, playing at home, I, I I don't see Iowa State losing that game. We'll see how much of a challenge Baylor can put up. But how about this one, Richie? In Stillwater, where Oklahoma State has been very beatable over the last couple of years. Sure They're has. playing West Virginia. I like the Mountaineers in this spot. I, I was down on Oklahoma State coming into the season. 
I'm sticking with it. I don't think West Virginia is a great team, but I don't think Oklahoma State is a great team either. So Mountaineers, 30-27, they get the win. Wow. So not only is West Virginia getting a win, it's a high-scoring win. They are they're a quality football team too. And I'll tell you that I feel like West Virginia has not performed to my personal expectations. I thought they were going to be around an eight-win team, maybe a little bit better. I, I still think they go bowling this year, but I don't know. I, I'm with you. This could be a game they win. Unfortunately, I'm still sticking with the home team. I just feel like Oklahoma State at some point has to get things going. At some point, Ollie Gar- Ow- oh my goodness, I can't talk. Ollie Gordon has to get things going. We've seen flashes from him. They just need to figure it out. Alan Bowman, he's fine. He is what he is. Mm. I trust Oklahoma State to eventually get things going. I think this could be a statement game. I'm with you. West Virginia could get the upset. I'm going to stick with the home team, though. Give me the Cowboys. Lastly, Friday night game, TCU, Houston. I dare you. I dare you to pick the Cougars. Cougars by 30. There it is. No no (laughs) takesy-backsies. What? No! (laughs) I've got TCU by 30. Sorry. I've got TCU 45 to 20. Uh, Poor Houston. This is just a rough, rough year for the Cougs. Can they beat someone who they shouldn't? That's the only question. Is can they can they have a win like ASU beating UCLA last year where you look up and go, they beat who? <laughs> they did what now? I think that would be uh I think that'd be a successful year for Houston. Is if they can beat someone that shocks everyone and, and makes you go, Hey, that's affecting the Big Twelve championship picture and Oh, we just uh, we just didn't expect that, but yeah, I got TCU forty five to twenty, and uh, I love having Richie Bradshaw as well. Locked on Sun Devils on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. Richie, appreciate it. As always, I appreciate you, Spencer. Fall down Arizona and forks up Arizona State. I figured you might end it that way. Appreciate everyone listening. I'll see you next time, and until then, hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.